Hi, this is Arthur, and you might notice that I'm filming from a new location. My boyfriend and I just moved in together, and so I'm filming from our dining room. <laughs> Moving in together has been really lovely, very exhausting, which is why I haven't filmed in a bit, and it's got me thinking about our origin story and how we got together. So I wanted to tell you guys a little bit of our backstory, uh, in part because I'm a really sappy person and very nostalgic and I love telling the story, but also because, you know, I think some of you guys have joined my channel in the past year or two years, and I know because I get a lot of comments that people view the life I have as very desirable, but also some, you know, unattainable in some way. Like, it seems like I've always been like this, and I had this really amazing transition, and it seems out of reach. And it's true that I'm really happy right now, um, that's definitely true, but there was a lot of work and intentionality to get where I am, and I think that the, you know, the backstory of how Harry and I got together really exemplifies that. So, right now, it's true that I, you know, I have a great career, I have a great relationship with my family, I have a boyfriend of two and a half years, and I have a community and lots of friends that I feel really close with. But, you know, this world that I live in where I feel really comfortable as a gay man, I feel really at home as a gay man, has not always been true for me. And right now it's the case that I feel just immediately at ease when I step into a room with hundreds and hundreds of gay men. I'm like, wow, I'm home, this is great. But three years ago that would have sent me into a total panic. And there's been a lot of like intentional exploration that I've done to get to this place. Okay, so. The story of how Harry and I got together actually goes back to the summer of 2021. Um, my, I used to live in a house with a bunch of other economics PhD students, and at that time in my life, all of my friends were economics PhD students. This was great, I love these people, um, but, you know, it was, I was the only trans person, there are basically no trans economists, and so I was living this sort of like, you know, I don't know, hybrid life, right, where I would talk with them about my transness, and they're very lovely and very supportive, but it's not like they all got it. Um, but, I, but I enjoyed that, and I, I liked these people. And so summer of 2021, we were throwing an outdoor sort of porch party, and we invited a bunch of ac other economics grad students. I remembered as I was meeting those people, so I was like, um, you know, I was coming up of a year on testosterone. And I was meeting all these people, and people did not realize it was trans. And I was like, this is amazing, this is so awesome, it's very scary, and it's very new. Uh, I was so delighted that people were immediately calling me he, and it wasn't an awkward, like, I'm Arthur, my pronouns are he, him. It was just like they saw me as a guy and they were calling me he. But it also felt very nerve-wracking that like maybe they would realize or I would let it slip or something would go wrong and then would they call me she, what would happen? It just felt very new. And so this party, we invited mostly other economics grad students, but in one of the neighbor apartment buildings, there was this guy that I then was going to become friends with um, who decided to just crash, crash our party because it was, you know, an outdoor party. We seemed like nice people. And so he came over with his whole apartment. It was like three or four of them. And I remember running to, into him on the steps. And what he told me later was that when they were crashing this party, they, were, they, they agreed that they were going to say that they were looking for John. And then obviously there was going to be some John somewhere and that would be how they, you know, would, would integrate themselves. So I run into this guy on the porch and I kind of immediately clock him as trans. And I didn't really know many trans people in real life at that stage. And I really wanted to, like I wanted to have people I could talk with. And saying that I was trans felt very scary and very vulnerable at that time in my life. Um, I like, I wasn't really doing that either, but I was like, you know what, it's worth it. Even though it's scary, I'm going to talk with him and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see that, I, you know, if I can make this work. And so I approach him and in my sort of, you know, <laughs> my drunken charm, I was like, are you trans? Because I'm trans too. And, you know, I had the right read about him. We immediately hit it off and we were immediately super close and bonded over this. And it turns out he was actually at a similar stage with this transition where it was very novel to him that he was going to this party and everyone was immediately gendering him as male. And that was also a first for him. So very intentionally, you know, we exchanged numbers. We're like, we're gonna meet up. And I was like, I gotta make this friendship work. Like, not only did I like him, but I was like, I just don't know any trans guys. Like I need to like, you know, I need to have a community. And so, you know, we became really great friends and so then, you know, fast forward a few months later, and he invites me to watch uh, Dragula. So he, I, I remember how he texted me, he was like, do you like drag or do you like horror? Uh, so Dragula is like, uh, it's like sort of like RuPaul's Drag Race in that it's a competition with drag performers, but 
it incorporates horror sort of fear factor style elements. I had never watched drag and I hated horror, so it was like a no and a no. <laughs> uh, but I knew that at this gathering there would be other queer people. And at that stage of my life, I still didn't really, like, I didn't have a queer community. I didn't know, I knew just that one trans guy. I didn't really know anyone. And I knew at that stage that I was a gay man, but I didn't have many gay male friends and I didn't feel part of the gay male community. And I was like, okay, from what I've seen online, drag is an important cultural phenomenon for gay men. So I have to at least try it. And so I went over, I went over and it turns out this was going to be hosted at Harry's apartment and so, you know, I got to meet Harry and I got to meet a bunch of other people. And I didn't like it the first time I went. I found it very intimidating. Again, it was very intentional that I went and I felt new, I felt like a stranger, I felt worried I was being awkward, and I felt really out of the know. Like immediately everyone was making all of these comments that revealed that they knew a lot about Drag Race or just a lot about drag in general, and they watched all the previous seasons of Dragula, and they, you know, had these sophisticated opinions about outfits, and I just, like, didn't feel equipped to say any comments, and that's, like, half of watching drag is, like, yelling comments, and I just sat there, and I was very scared. And I'm a very loud and extroverted person, so for me to be just sitting there, you know, I don't know, it shows I'm, like, you know, the newness. Um, you know, and I remember I was talking with some someone after, and I was, he was talking about, you know, his, his thoughts about makeup and drag and, you know, was he ever going to do drag and he asked me if I would do drag and it was clear in that moment that it was like, it would have been relevant to say that I was trans. Like I, if I felt 100% comfortable in that situation, I would say, oh, well, I was trans so I kind of was doing some version of drag for a long time and I don't really have any desire to touch makeup ever again, but I'm, I was good at it and then I would have, you know, whatever, had a lot of stories about that. But instead I just said like, no and I didn't want to say that I was trans, and even in this queer setting, I was still intimidated. Um, but I left that gathering, and I didn't think like, oh, that will never work for me, or oh, clearly I'm not like acceptable as a gay man because I didn't feel comfortable my first time at Dracula. I thought, well, it's a new thing I was doing, so of course I didn't fit in immediately. And I decided to go again. And like, I remember this was like around my finals time where it was in my second year of grad school and so I was taking, you know, exams. And it was like, felt like another assignment to me. I was like, I gotta go and I gotta do the thing. I'm gonna watch TV with these people, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna do it. And I treat it like a task, right? And I know that sounds crazy to say, it's like, oh, you know, you think that like social things should always be fun and you should always like only do what you want to do. But I kind of knew in my gut that that these feelings of feeling uncomfortable did not mean that I would never feel comfortable, but they meant that I need to put in some work. And so then, you know, it comes around to January and I'm, you know, I'm in this group chat with people that watch Dragula and people seem fun and I find Harry very intriguing <laughs> and I go to, to watch Drag Race and I knew leading up to that, I was like, oh, like, you know, the fact I haven't watched a single episode of RuPaul's Drag Race is embarrassing. Like, that's, ugh. And so I talked with one of my housemates and I was like, I was like, she, and I knew she'd watch a lot of Drag Race, and I was like, can you tell me, like, what do I need to know? What are, like, the biggest hits of Drag Race? And she's like, okay, like, we'll sit you down, we'll have an evening, we'll binge a bunch of stuff, then you'll know everything you need to know, you'll be able to say all you want to say in those conversations, and I was like, great. We didn't know exactly that, but we had a conversation about it, and then she, you know, agreed to come with me to watch Drag Race with this group. So we go over and we watch Drag Race with this group, and and it felt a little better, you know? Like, it was the start of a new season, you know, was I 100% comfortable? Maybe not really, but... I felt able to say some things, and then after, you know, we're all sitting around, you know, crisscross applesauce on the floor and drinking White Claws and making banter, and I was like, this is fun. And at this point, you know, Harry had certainly caught my eye. I liked his little stories. I liked talking with someone who was also gay, uh, and, you know, his stories about gay clubs and the gay boys he'd kissed and all that. Um, and I was, like, pretty entranced by him and, you know, still somewhat intimidated. And I remember we were walking back from Harry's apartment and me and my friend were talking and apparently I told her, I was like, I know what you're thinking, that Harry is totally my type or whatever. Um, and I decided, I was like, you know what? I really want this group of people. Like, I like this group of people. I want to fit in. I think I'm on the way to fitting in. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to offer to host. Right? And it was like, that was a leap of faith. It was pretty intentional. Like, <laughs> I, 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 knew I didn't 100% know everyone yet, so I was like, the best way to know people is to, like, you know, have them come over, give them a bunch of chips and salsa and alcohol, and, you know, and do something together at my place. And so, I had this big group of people over, 
And I remember being so happy that everyone showed up because again, many of them didn't know me. There were people that I met for the first time that night coming over. And I also, in advance of that, I was talking to my therapist because I was like, I really want to be more comfortable saying that I'm trans. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with it. I even had, like, I had this YouTube channel the whole time, right? Like, I'm like, why can't I tell strangers online that I'm trans? Why can't I tell people my real life? And I was like, it's particularly insane in this setting where this group of people, m many of them were trans, and many of them who maybe wouldn't necessarily identify as trans were like, he they's, right? And then those who weren't were like, clearly very cool with trans people. And so I was like, if anything, I think it would like, I don't know, it would, endear me to people more if they knew that I was trans. Like, it's a cool part of me. People would see it as cool. Why can't I say it? And so, you know, I talked with my therapist. I talked with my the same housemate. I was like, I'm going to really, this night, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to have, when I have people over, when I host, at some point, I'm going to reference being trans. And, you know, so we're watching Drag Race. I'm having a good time, and I like it, right? Fourth time's the charm. Eventually, eventually I bought in. Eventually, like, it made sense to me. And so, I was having a good time. And I think during one of the, you know, the ad breaks, I was standing, I was off in the kitchen making conversation with Harry. And, you know, we're both a little tipsy, and, um, you know, we were talking about Grindr, and I was, I was making some comment about how I'd never been on Grindr, and I couldn't be on Grindr. And he was like, why is that? And I was like, perfect, this is my perfect opportunity to say that I'm trans, because the reason that I wasn't on Grindr at that point in time was because I was a trans guy, and I didn't think that Grindr was an okay place for that. And so I was like, oh, well, because I'm trans. And then Harry says with no hesitation, well, there are trans men on Grindr. <laughs> and which is so silly because now, after having done several years on Grindr, yes, there are trans men on Grindr, you can definitely be on Grindr. And I thought that was so like, he was just like, what are you talking about? And, you know, and then we were talking more about, it. I was like, yeah, like about like what I was looking for. And he was like, oh, is there anyone you're interested in generally? <laughs> and in that moment, I was like, I was like, no, and then I was like, no, it's my shot. And I was like, uh, I do think that you're attractive though. <laughs> and he was like, well, I think the same and I'm happy you said something. And I said, I was like, I'm working on being more forward. And then he said, well, I'm working on being less forward, which I thought was very funny because we'd really, you know, we'd been coming at this whole thing from sort of opposite experiences and opposite sides of things. And, you know, and we got together that night and then a few times later, eventually, we were boyfriends. But I thought it was very, like, telling and funny that this was, like, the first time I got to practice disclosure, and the first time I got to practice saying that I was trans was what, like, led me into, you know, my very serious multi-year relationship, you know? And literally, this happened, like, this world I live in right now that is amazing and joyous, and this apartment I have, and this boyfriend I love, because I worked up the courage to say that I was trans that night. Like, because I was in therapy and I knew that that was something I wanted to work on because I knew that I wanted community and because I intentionally put myself in spaces to find community and because, you know, I was brave enough to confide in another trans person, right? There is nothing accidental about this place I'm in right now. And that's not to say that this will happen for everyone. And that's not to say that everyone is destined to do the exact same set of things, you know, I did, right? Like. Many trans people, you know, are not destined to be binary men. Many are not gay men. Even among gay men who are trans, some people don't find community in these sort of like all-male spaces. Some people find community with other men broadly, with mixed gender queer settings. Some people, some, some gay trans men love hanging out with lesbians. You know, all sorts of things are okay and all sorts of things make sense. But I think it's that like trying that you have to do, right? Like, and I see a lot of guys who are early in their transition who are gay, who are queer, and who want, who want that, who want to see what it's like to be in queer male spaces, but are scared about it. And I think that if you sit around waiting for the moment when you're not scared, you know, it'll just never come. Like, you have to do it in spite of the fear. And you will feel uncomfortable before you feel comfortable. Like, there's no option to, like, do all the internal work to then be able to go to like a 200 person harness kink underwear party, <laughs> you know, like that, that won't happen. And if that's gonna, if that's something you're meant for, like <laughs> it, it will, you'll eventually get there. But like these things are like social. What it is to fit in among gay men isn't just about the internal work. It's also about like learning what it is to, to hang out in those spaces and learning the language and learning the references, and you can't really do that alone. You have to do that through, like, 
I don't want to say embarrassing yourself, but like through new things. And it's not even a trans-specific experience. Like now I've been hanging out in gay male spaces long enough that I will see cis guys who are exploring those spaces for the first time. Whether that's because of aspects related to their sexuality, because they're young, just graduating college, because maybe they weren't comfortable going out, they're introverted, whatever. And I will see guys that like are clearly new to it and like you can tell the way that they speak about things, but like no one cares, you know what I mean? I'll go to these gay vacation sites where there are gay people of all ages and I'll be talking with gay men who are in their 50s and it's obvious that I'm young and it's obvious that I don't know everything they know, but that's like, okay. These spaces have people of all different experiences and of all different backgrounds and all different comfort levels. And it's okay, like no one's gonna like be mad at you for being new, even if it, it might be clear you're new, it's okay. When I think back on those times, it's actually a little surreal to remember like how, how scared I was to try, but I'm like very grateful that I did because here I am now. And I think that this, this experience of putting yourself in a new situation where you don't feel comfortable, where you don't know the words yet, where you're just figuring it out, and having faith is like a muscle. Like it's a muscle that's very valuable in general. And I think about like, I don't know, society broadly, and this is something when I talk with my straight male friends that comes up a lot, is like, it, it is hard to find community these days. And like, and I think that that skill of like making friends and of finding your place in the world is something that is like really important. And it's a muscle you can exercise and train and it gets easier over time. When I first met Harry, I remembered being so intimidated where I was like, he knows so much more about gay male things than I did. And now I know that where we were three years ago, we both knew so little compared to like the ways we fit in now into those spaces and the kinds of experiences we've had. Like we were both kind of young. Um, and I'm sure that in a decade, I'll feel the same way again. And now I feel like kind of like with him, I'm able to um, explore different forms of community together. And again, it goes just beyond gay things. Like, uh, you know, I think exploring community can look like, like, yeah, like hanging out with other sort of grad students and seeing how that feels, hanging out with like Harry's Jewish, you know, and like trying to find his space within the Jewish community right now. And like, like there are lots of different ways that and times when you want to be like intention, intentional about like making friends and making community and putting yourself out there. And it's just gotten so much easier over time. Anyways, this is all to say that um, if you don't feel like you're there yet and you don't see how it's possible that like one day you could feel, you know, in community and that one day, you know, you could feel desired by someone, that that is like understandable and normal and part of the process and that you're gonna have to just like do the stuff in spite of feeling that way. And yeah, like I think of those times as very beautiful and very special and I love thinking back on those memories because of like how much that taught me about myself. And that, you know, one day in a few years you might look around yourself and you're in a lovely brand new apartment starting a lovely life with your partner and, you know, we have a lot of boxes to keep unpacking. Um, okay, so that's that. I just wanted to, you know, walk down memory lane um, and tell you guys that story. I'm hoping to film some videos with Harry now that we live together. Um, and I'm hoping to film a lot more videos in general, like it's a lot easier to negotiate filming when there's just one person in the house, so like, I know he's at dinner right now, so that's why I'm filming in total darkness. Um, so let me know if there's anything you would want me and Harry to talk about together. Um, I, I think that would be cute. Um, and also let me know if there's anything that you'd want to hear about from me <laughs> alone or any just video ideas you have in general. All right, bye.